told you. Right. Small businesses are better suited to be more innovative than larger organizations. They can execute ideas more quickly and pivot easier than enterprise level companies. But innovations at their level have to be upscaled to help them function even better. Talking about upscaling of innovation in small, medium enterprises and how they can be done, we're joined by Jenna Akwale, an intellectual property expert and a world vast in the business world. Jenna, good morning, sir. Good morning to you. How are you? Happy to see you. We are doing fine. All right, let's get into the conversation uh, this morning. Uh, upscaling of innovations in SMS. What is this and why is it important? Let's begin from that point, Jenna, this morning. Well, thank you so much. I, I am happy today to, to join you and also share much on uh, SMEs in the upscaling of innovation in SME. Well, to, to begin with, though, just to lay foundation uh, across the globe, uh, SMEs has been defined in, the, uh, uh, in different ways. And according to me, um, some have defined SMEs across the globe uh, in the numbers that uh, an SME holds. Sadly, the assets and, uh, of course, uh, Assets can be current assets, fixed assets, and intangible assets. So in intangible assets, I think um, this is where we have uh, uh, much of uh, innovation building up in terms of uh, you know, IP related. And uh, of course, we have the SME Act of 2012 that recognized the uh, SME sector through establishment of an Office of Registrars of Enterprises. Of course, also establishment of an authority and the uh, development of prom or uh, development and promotion of uh, SMEs. Uh, in the development of and promotion of SMEs, uh, first to say is the capacity building program that was actually initiated in the Act of 2012, and uh, market development. In the third, where I strongly believe innovation uh, has its way in the SME, is a uh, uh, technology transfer. Uh, I have always argued that you cannot do technology transfer without innovation. There is no way you can say you're innovating without technology transfer because basically uh, building up technology or uh, or uptake of technology in SMEs eh, uh, is all about to do with innovation. And of course, you know, we are moving from now the fourth industrial revolution to now the fifth industrial revolution. And so... Uh, I think uh, those people who sat down and actually came up with the Act of 2012 for when the Parliament initiated the Act of 2012, back of their mind, they knew that EMEs will no longer, in the in the Vision 2030, it is not possible to, to have the tech transfer without uh, having emphasis on innovation. So recent development where the CS, uh, Ministry of Industrialization, Trade and Enterprise, uh, Honorable Munya, announced of SME policy and the need of public participation. So I want to believe that uh, this is the right direction to, to boost SME sector yes. and uh, actually upscale uh, innovation. So in my opinion, uh, this policy that has actually been proposed by uh, Munya should, uh, to a wide extent, cover innovation. And I want to, to believe that even in the public participation, uh, of course, innovation should now be enhanced and and, and put into to, to, uh, perspective in terms of upscaling it. All right, Jenna, let's talk about that specific area that you mentioned there, technology transfer. Could somebody talking to you this morning, can we expound on that specific area? Because you're saying that it's actually very hard for businesses to grow if they don't get into technology transfer. Can we talk about that a little bit wider and know exactly how this happens, Ajana? Okay, thank you. Uh, technology transfer is uh, basically uptake of technology uh, from across the developed nation. You, you, you're borrowing the technologies from developed nation and now you're trying to implement it uh, within our nation. 
Uh, if you look at a country like Japan, what they have done, they have technology transfer office that uh, are either in the universities, if not in the university, then it is within the community. So what basically happens is, is what I call open innovation, where the, the, the university generate ideas, generate technologies, and then that technology is taken to a technology transfer office. Uh, the technology transfer office uh, packages the idea and then uh, scale it up to the economy, to the sector, to the to the nation, and 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 people are able to you know utilize what has been uh, uh, brought forth. The other bit of it is now where we have the technology pool. The the, the technologies that are coming outside the country, they are pulled into the t through the TTO or other technology transfer office, yes. and then they are utilized within the nation. And so it, it is, it's all about a push and pull where technologies are generated and then they, they, they are able to be pushed outside the, 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 the country or they are pulled inside. So I would say SMEs and uh, I, I, I would want us to even engage further in uh, having this nation having uh, such kind of offices where we have an established technology transfer office. SMEs can come and check out on the innovative ideas that have been generated and then they utilize them for the purpose of boosting up their uh, productivity or actually increasing their sales and actually utilizing the new ideas that have actually been generated. Is that what is uh, lacking to a, to a large extent locally, you would say, Jana? Yes, it's lacking to a large extent eh? because, you, as I've just mentioned, technology transfer uh, in two ways. They can be within the university or research institute setting yeah. or outside the universities and uh, for them to work, uh, for SMEs to benefit from the technology transform, we need what we call open innovation, where there is a link between the university and SME and the government. So when the government funds in research institutes or government funds uh, universities, that money should enhance technology boost uh, universities or researchers should get deeper into you know and i think the 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 ideas and 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 coming up with prototypes that can be utilized as uh, technologies or can can be generated otherwise as technologies then in so doing when they are pushed into the technology transfer office the 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 SMEs can actually borrow from the, the TTO or they can visit the TTOs and, and are able to utilize. So you see, we, we are working uh, in, independently. SMEs are on their own, universities are on their own, and we do not have that kind of collaboration. And uh, as I've just mentioned, that is in, in, in developed nation, they call it open innovation. They are able to utilize, they are able to work together harmoniously, and in so doing, they are able to boost their uh, technologies mm -hmm. so so to say uh, i just mentioned an example of japan they have actually developed a strategy called the triple helix strategy yes. the triple helix strategy is assisting uh, japan to have the smes the government and the university work in collaboration and in so doing smes have not been left behind and I, uh, if you can see the number of vehicles they're able to manufacture and the technology that is coming about even with the japanese vehicles in the recent past has really really increased so i would say we have lacked we have lagged behind in terms of the development of technology transfer uh, and it's not actually put into perspective as far as uh, uh, this matter is concerned. Pretty much, Janan. So let's talk about then exactly what happens around that area. Does it mean that when we're talking about innovation or upscaling innovation within MSMEs, that we have to give also a special focus to tech companies within the economy as well, Jana? Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. uh, maybe before we get to there i would want us to get deep into defining innovation because i'm thinking this 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 there's a there's a close link between invention and innovation so innovation is actually implementation of a new idea in the marketplace yes how are you able to come up with a new idea and implement it in the market for purposes of commercialization or just utilizing that those who would prefer having an unprofit uh, ventures where they just uh, have new ideas and 
push it into the market and to be able to utilize it. So once we understand that uh, innovation is just not basically on technology, but you can just have an idea. For example, uh, if you look at um, Mac MacBook, they have a, a, a name or a trademark I would called Apple. So you see that uh, in what gives Apple a market is the name that they have attached to it. And so, so to say, innovation has been revolved around the name of Apple. They, they have utilized the name Apple effectively to the marketplace. And in so doing, it's not about the, the computers that they are making. It's actually the name that they are selling. Of course, there's the technology behind the, the, the Apple, the, the, the MacBook that they, they create, and, and, and of course, the technologies that they have boosted within the, the MacBook. But what gives a, a MacBook or Apple the name is actually that the name Apple. Because there are so many other computers that have been that have come in the market, uh, and uh, there's HP, there's what, uh, what have you. And now, what is giving uh, the computers of Apple the the market niche is actually the name Apple. And so, technology uh, in itself can be utilized. Of course, uh, like for example, here in Kenya. SMEs are utilizing M-Pesa technology to, you know, enhance their operation. Uh, for example, if you walk right now into the Juakali sector, uh, it is very possible right now to use the TIL number to, you know, transact. And I will say uh, technology, and that brings me brings us back to open innovation. We cannot uh, have uh, SME run independently for them to be uh, extremely successful. So we have to, to, to devise a way, a strategy in which SMEs are able to collaborate with the uh, you know technology companies, uh, Safaricom, Huawei, among others that have already picked in the market, and now uh, utilize the systems that they have created to enhance their operation, to enhance their productivity, to maximize on their profits. Pretty much. All right. So when you look at the whole MSME policy in in the country, Jenna, would you say that it is lacking or these policies are there? Is that it's just that they've not actually been actualized upon? Well, uh, what I would say is that uh, we do not have an SME policy in this country. What we have is yes. the act, in, uh, the the act, the twenty twelve SME Act. That uh, I think, uh, as at now, we actually need. Of course, you know, when we are doing evaluation, we need now to evaluate in the last ten years what has the SME Act uh, uh, enhanced or what has it, uh, has it, what impact has it brought to the SME? Yes. We do not have policy. Uh, last year, around January, the CS in uh, the Ministry of Industrialization, Honorable Munya, mentioned uh, on the public participation on the SME policy which I think uh, should actually be fast-tracked so that uh, Kenyans and the SME can benefit from this policy. And I want to believe that immediately after the policy has been established, then we can come up with a strategy on how we can effectively use the SME policy. And so to say, I would uh, say that uh, the, the government needs to actually put much more emphasis on also evaluating the act and how was it? Because there was within the act there was an establishment of an authority. How has this authority enabled SME, and to what extent has it boosted the SME? And I will closely link the SME policy with the IP policy, or yes. rather the innovation policy. Yes. We do not have intellectual property policy in this nation. We also do not have uh, IP policy in this nation. If you look at a country like South Africa. They have a national innovation policy governed or managed by NIPMO. And uh, if you look at the recent rank, uh, South Africa is ranked as the best in Africa in terms of innovation. Of course, Kenya, we are coming in second. But I want to believe that uh, if we effect or, uh, you know, enhance uh, or, or come up with innovation policy and IP policy, then we can be able to develop strategies that SME can benefit, and of course other sectors would also benefit, and we will build up an uh, an innovation ecosystem in this nation, whereby we shall increase even our GDP and and improve our you know the the, the economy of this country. Pretty much. So 
Mm. Uh, Jenna, and, and I know that you're an intellectual property expert as well. What do you say is because we are also not so much developed in understanding what intellectual property is really, is that what we normally are saying we're also lacking in terms of innovation in the MSME sector? When you link those two, would you find that they are... They, they, that intellectual property, intellectual property understanding with innovation, they go hand in hand, and that's why really the MSME sector has not really innovated that much. Uh, very right. Yeah, intellectual property uh, is actually a constituent, or I would say, an ingredient to innovation. Yes. If you want to improve, or if you want to target a niche market, you have to come up with a new idea. And basically, if you come with this new idea. Every other person would want to copy it. The best way to, to maximize on, on your new idea is having it protected. And protection of uh, an idea is now what brings out to intellectual property. So intellectual property covers, say, uh, you, you know, different regimes, but it is basically protection of intangible assets. These intangible at assets can be creation of the mind. You know, you could have research and come up with a, a, a completely new idea and this so to say yes. will, will need to be protected we have the different uh, areas of pro of protection or rather different regimes of ip uh, they are categorized basically on industrial property and copyright copyright we protect them in kenya copyright board and uh, the industrial property rights are, are governed or rather are protected through kenya industrial property institute uh, basically, the industrial property uh, 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 covers inventions. And when we say inventions, we are looking at patents, we are looking at trademark, we are looking at utility models. And in utility models, this, 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 this is where I would uh, uh, encourage SMEs to really, really utilize. Because most, most, most of the innovation that happens uh, in SMEs are called are what we call incremental innovation yes. where you have uh, a system and you just improve something small on it uh, what we normally refer to it as inventive step inventive step this in that is ideally protected under a regime called utility model and we file the uh, the ip in the uh, kenya industrial property institute so smes can actually benefit on ip and for you to target a niche market, then you have to actually, you know, utilize the, the monopoly that comes along with uh, IP. Because when you protect it, simply means you own, you are owning this invention, you are owning this, uh, you know, name, uh, if it is a trademark. So once you have that ownership, it means you exclude others for a limited time. Eh? For utility model is 10 years for patents in Kenya is 20 years. So for the next 10 years, once you're protected with the Kenya Industrial Property Institute, yes. the, uh, you are able to exclude others. And that gives you, uh, you know, leverage in terms of sales, uh, in terms of, you know, uh, market, so that uh, you have a, a, a market that you have target and you have targeted. And within the, the, that market, you are the only one with that, uh, you are providing solution in that market. So I would say SMEs uh, need actually to be sensitized on the matters of IP for them to actually scale up and actually increase their, you know, income. Interesting conversations this morning. You hear exactly yeah. what Jenna is saying. Jenna is saying, well, we, we don't have an MSME policy that really escalates um, innovation within MSMEs and it says that indeed... Maximus need to understand the link between innovation and intellectual property if indeed we're going to cut the mark and be competitive in the region and across the world as well. Jenna Akwale, thank you very much for taking time this morning to speak to us here at Metropole Television. Thank you, thank you so much. Fantastic. We take a short break. Once we come back, the economic review, top on that, what is going on at the Kenya Power and also, our debt situation in the country, is it spiraling out of control right here on Metropole Television? <laughs>